What's up guys, back with another Borderlands video, and since you guys seemed to like the last video response I did, I figured I would go ahead and do another one. Now, about a week or two ago, an article was published on DualShockers.com titled, What Will Borderlands 3 Look Like in a Post-Destiny World? And it was written by their features editor, Ryan Meitzler. Now, before we start, like my last video response video, I do ask that you please don't send this article's author any hate. And I just wanted to go ahead and say this because some people can get crazy and lose their minds on the internet sometimes. So just be cool and I'll go ahead and give you guys some of my opinions about the content of this Dual Shockers article. To quickly summarize what will Borderlands 3 look like in a post-Destiny world, Ryan Meitzler goes on to say that they are curious about how the impact of recent trends in the current gaming landscape, especially when it comes to shooters, might drive the direction for the Borderlands series moving forward. Meitzler talks about how titles like Destiny and The Division have helped coin the term shared world shooter and how both of these games' success have inspired other companies to have their own versions of games like Destiny and The Division. Specifically, he talks about how EA and BioWare's Anthem seems to be following this shared world loot-based shooter trend, and as this pertains to Borderlands 3, Meitzler has a hunch that we'll see Borderlands 3 develop into something closer to what Destiny and The Division have modeled themselves into, which would be a quasi-MMORPG shared world looter shooter like Destiny and The Division. In the article, he then goes on to discuss the more positive aspects of games like The Division and Destiny, while also acknowledging a few of their faults. Specifically, he mentions how Destiny and The Division have a satisfying core gameplay loop. However, both games have suffered from a myriad of problems, whether that be bad storytelling, poor endgame content, lousy DLC add-ons, or a genuine lack of transparency between the developers and the game's community, like we've recently seen with Bungie and the Destiny 2 community. Meitzler feels that Borderlands 3 could make good on the features that made Destiny and The Division successful, but improve on some of the areas where those games fell flat, namely the storytelling, the poor endgame content, and I suppose the lousy DLC add-ons. In other words, I think it's fair to say that Meitzler would like to see Borderlands 3 be more of a shared world shooter like Destiny and the Division, while retaining the series' humor, the great NPCs, and the, again, historically good add-on content. Meitzler then goes on to talk about how Borderlands 2's Sanctuary could be reworked for Borderlands 3 to be more like a social space or hub, much like the original Destiny's Tower, or how it might be nice to occasionally encounter other Vault Hunters while you're out on the fields of Pandora. Sort of like how you can encounter random Guardians while traversing the various planets of Destiny. Meitzler said he liked this because seeing other players in the game made the game feel more alive and presumably more interesting to him. Conversely, Meitzler mentions that he found it difficult to get into the original Borderlands game because he couldn't play with friends. And he even mentions, and I quote, Borderlands 2, however, is starting to show its age in a lot of ways. We'll get back to that particular comment later, but ultimately, I think it's safe to say that Meitzler would like to see Borderlands 3 be more of a Destiny clone, as that would supposedly be more relevant for modern gamers. If you want to read this article in its entirety, I'll leave a link in the description, but let's go ahead and go over some of the things that he said here. But first, I've got to reply to that Borderlands 2 is starting to show its age in a lot of ways comments. And, you know, I don't know if you're a console gamer. I'm assuming if your website is Dual Shockers, you only play the game on PS4. But if you boot up Borderlands 2 on PC and you can run the game at 4K, 60 FPS, the game looks like a modern game, and it looks beautiful. I suppose the game could benefit from some new textures and maybe some HDR support, but for the most part, Borderlands 2 has aged remarkably well. So, Ryan Meltzler, maybe you're just trolling us, and it's kind of funny if you are trolling us, because you did get a reaction out of me. 
But ultimately, I would like to go ahead and talk about where I actually agree with you now. Like Meitzler, I also have had a hunch, or perhaps more accurately, a worry that Borderlands 3 will be more of a shared world looter shooter experience, and that Borderlands 3 will be a Destiny clone with a Borderlands paint job. The main reason for this is because while Destiny and The Division have received a lot of mixed reception by the larger gaming community, both games have been commercial successes. In fact, Destiny 2 sold quite well, despite the fact that the game is currently mired in controversy and has a dying player base. My fear for a long time has been that Gearbox, 2K, or Take-Two Interactive are going to look at the commercial success of games like Destiny and The Division and attempt to mutate Borderlands into one of these generic shared world type games. I also agree with Meitzler when it comes to the fact that Borderlands games in general have had a more interesting story as well as more interesting side quests and characters. After all, the only interesting NPC PC and Destiny that I can think of is Kate 6, while Borderlands has Handsome Jack, Tiny Tina, Mr. Torg, Claptrap, Sir Hammerlock, and Patricia Tannis, just to name a few. Also, I think it's fairly safe to say that the Borderlands side quests having pop culture references ultimately make them far more interesting than a lot of Destiny's generic strike missions. However, I strongly disagree with Meitzler on just about everything else, especially when it comes to the sentiment that making Borderlands 3 more of a shared world Destiny clone would actually be a great idea. In fact, I think that making Borderlands more like Destiny would be a terrible idea and would not only potentially split the Borderlands fanbase, but it could also end up killing the franchise. Let me explain why Borderlands is already great and honestly doesn't need to change all that much. At its core, Borderlands is a single player game that gives you the option to play with other people if you want to. This is an extremely important distinction to make because Borderlands is often conflated with games like Destiny or The Division that may have a similar gameplay loop but are predominantly multiplayer experiences. The ability for the player to choose between whether they want to play Borderlands as a single player or multiplayer game is really what's so appealing about it. After all, if you're predominantly a single player gamer, you can get through all of the Borderlands games by yourself and get a large amount of enjoyment out of it. However, if you're a multiplayer gamer, you can also get through all of the Borderlands games and really enjoy them with a group of friends. Because of the fact that the player can choose whether they want to play by themselves or in a cooperative setting, the game is more enjoyable for everyone involved. By making Borderlands a shared world shooter in the veins of something like Destiny or The Division, you are removing this single player component and potentially limiting the appeal of the game. And if you ask me, for what? Just so you can see a couple of random people in the shared game world that you can't even communicate with on your headset? Not to mention that because Destiny is a more multiplayer focused game, there are certain activities that the player can't even do unless they have a group of people to play Destiny with. A great example of this is any of the strike missions in Destiny. You have to buy Xbox Live Gold or PlayStation Plus in order to play through some of those missions. And where things start to get really ridiculous is when you have to have a dedicated group of Destiny friends just to play through some of the Destiny raids and other endgame content. The fact that you can't do these by yourself, like you can in Borderlands, in my opinion is atrocious, and it's mind-boggling to me that Bungie is so hell-bent on not including proper matchmaking for these modes. Again, part of the appeal of Borderlands is that you can play by yourself, and multiplayer just so happens to be a pretty amazing bonus that is there for those that are interested. Borderlands in that sense is kind of like the newer Far Cry games or the Soulsborne series in the sense that those games at their core are strong single player experiences that have optional cooperative, PvP, and other multiplayer game modes. Imagine for a moment if you are forced in Dark Souls to always play in a group. 
that probably wouldn't be very fun, especially if you got stuck with someone that was either inexperienced or was just a griefer and trying to ruin your game. Same with Far Cry. Imagine if a significant portion of the missions in a Far Cry game required you to play with someone else. For me personally, that would ruin the appeal of the game and make me just wish that they made those missions single player missions. Something else to consider is that having Borderlands 3 become a shared world shooter is inconsistent with what fans of the Borderlands franchise expect and like about Borderlands. More often than not, when a developer or publisher changes the core formula of a game and a franchise, it usually leads to either a split player base or the death of the franchise itself. A great example is Bungie's own Halo. Halo 1, Halo 2, and Halo 3 all have relatively consistent gameplay between releases. The major difference is that the newer games added new features and quality of life improvements like how Halo 2 added online multiplayer and Halo 3 added Forge and custom games. Fast forward to Microsoft's Halo games like Halo 4 and especially Halo 5, and Halo is basically copying Call of Duty at this point. What made Halo unique is largely gone, and in a vain attempt to attract the Call of Duty audience, Microsoft has largely been responsible for the Halo series' declining popularity, and by changing the game so much and not feeding the original fans' expectations, they've alienated the diehard fanbase that was supporting Halo. And as a result, a lot of the core fanbase and sales potential for that game is now gone and will likely never come back. Another great example is Dead Space. For whatever reason, instead of making another survival horror game like the previous two titles, Dead Space 3 was an action game complete with its own set of obnoxious microtransactions. As you can imagine, the game sold poorly and the franchise was put on hold until EA killed Visceral Games last year, thus officially killing off that franchise for good. Or even think about Final Fantasy. Ever since the release of Final Fantasy XII, I would argue that the franchise has struggled to maintain a lot of its previous relevancy. While it's true that they now release a new Final Fantasy game every 10 years now, and that's certainly going to have an effect on things, I do think that because Square Enix abandoned the classic turn-based combat that the franchise was known for, it has definitely alienated a lot of previous fans and certainly contributed to the decline in sales. Not to mention a few lousy Final Fantasy MMO releases, which certainly didn't help anything either. But back to Borderlands. Radically changing Borderlands into being more of a shared world shooter could have a similar effect on the franchise. And for that reason, I think it's a really bad idea. It's one thing to add new features that make the game more enjoyable by enhancing what is already there. For example, allowing the player to fly buzzards would be a really cool addition. It's another thing to totally overhaul what Borderlands is and turn it into a Destiny clone, which I'm pretty sure is going to turn a lot of the Borderlands fanbase off. Something that's also worth considering is that both the audience here on YouTube and on Twitch is pretty big for Borderlands 2. Unlike a lot of games that come and go over the years, Borderlands 2 has really held on and has a very loyal and dedicated fan base here on YouTube and on Twitch. And in the case of Twitch in particular, in February 2018, Borderlands 2 had an average Twitch viewership of about 1,200 viewers a day. And while that's not as high as Destiny 2's 2,000 or so, you gotta keep in mind that Borderlands 2 is going on 6 years old, and Destiny 2 isn't even a year old. So if you ask me, there is a lot of enthusiasm for the current Borderlands formula, and I would say that is another reason to not make Borderlands 3 a shared world shooter. Ultimately, I would say if you want Borderlands to be more like Destiny or The Division, you should really just go play Destiny or The Division. Saying Borderlands should be more like Destiny is almost like saying Counter-Strike should be more like Call of Duty. 
the fact is, I think the current Borderlands formula established with Borderlands 2 has proven that it has enduring popularity, and honestly, I think it's timeless. Just look at the game's consistent player counts on Steam, and I don't think you can really say the same thing for something like The Division, which has a very inconsistent player count, or in the case of Destiny 2, currently has a dying player base. To quote a famous saying from a politician named Bert Lance, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Alright guys, I think that's going to pretty much wrap up this video response. If you made it to the end of this video, feel free to leave a comment with the word mugwump. And if you're curious, this is actually a real term for a political activist that switched sides during the presidential election of 1884. Honestly, I just thought it was a pretty funny word, but otherwise, guys, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see y'all next time.